This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I think my uh, screen is visible now. All of you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, good. So yesterday was a, uh, officially first day of uh, training course to uh, performance testing with JMeter. And this is a agenda for the entire course. Okay, introduction to performance testing, core concepts related with the performance testing, JMeter introduction, script recording and replay in JMeter, thread group, samplers, various types of controllers so these are nothing but the elements of jmeter this thread group sampler controller so these are called as building blocks or the elements of jmeter then we'll see how correlation is done in jmeter what is correlation config elements various types of config elements are present in jmeter assertions timers listeners so again these would be the elements of jmeter uh, then we'll see how API testing is done in JMeter, uh, various inbuilt functions offered by JMeter. Non-GUI execution, workload modeling, JMeter reporting, and finally you will have the assignment. Okay, so this is the overall agenda. And yesterday we covered the introduction part of uh, performance testing. So we quickly uh, get an overview of what we covered yesterday so we started with the software definition itself we tried to understand what software means to us okay so we stated i stated that it is a generic term uh, which is used to describe collection of computer programs or piece of code that runs on a particular computer system in order to perform a specific task okay so and what are the examples of software so the notepad uh, the various browsers available in your system all performance testing tools okay the various websites or web applications which you access from your uh, browsers or whatever the programs that runs in inside your uh, mobile app mobiles so all of them are examples of software then we saw the software development life cycle in uh, detail so in which we covered the six points of a project planning requirement definition design stage development integration and test and finally comes the installation and acceptance okay so what we are going to more focus on is the fifth stage okay and that to the testing part of the fifth stage okay so which is nothing but software testing so what software testing means is it indicates the process or set of activities performed to verify whether software application works uh, or, for, or functions okay, or functions as expected or not okay so that is a simple definition of software testing to us then we saw the uh, high level uh, distribution of software testing between two parts which is functional testing and a non-functional testing in functional testing we saw the what are the what is called as functional testing okay so it is more related to the functional behavior of an application it is more related to a specific functionality of application how it works and the various uh, approaches for functional testing a manual approach and the automation approach uh, we saw the various tools which are used for uh, automation okay so selenium uft postman so these are the tools okay and with, in which selenium is open source and it is widely used tool among the automation tools then we saw various types of testing uh, unit testing integration testing acceptance testing okay and uh, finally we we came to non-functional testing 
okay so non functional testing is more related to the non functional aspects of overall application and what are those non functional aspects so those are responsiveness scalability and stability so in that we uh, saw that uh, what responsiveness means uh, what scalability means to us and what stability means so responsiveness is how quickly an application responds to the user input so that is nothing but the responsiveness of application scalability can be said as the ability of a system to handle growing amount of load uh, by load i mean by growing amount of concurrent users which are accessing the application or number of requests that are served by the application server and stability or also known as reliability so it can be uh, set as the ability of a system to perform and maintain its functions in uh, routine circumstances okay as well as in uh, some of the uh, uh, hostile or unexpected circumstances so how your whether your application is stable uh, in the particular workload environment or not so, so that is nothing but the stability of the application which we test in non functional testing so what are the types of non functional testing performance testing payload testing security testing so these are the various types of non functional testing in which performance testing is something that uh, we will majorly focus upon okay and then we initiated with the performance testing concepts okay so what is the definition of performance testing okay it is done in order to determine how fast or how quick some aspect of system performs okay and it is related to the scalability stability and resource usage it is used to determine the scalability stability and resource usage of the application then there are types of performance testing okay there is a client side performance testing and there is a server side performance testing so what uh, we would be more interested at this point is into server side performance testing okay what we are using jmeter here is for the server, server side performance testing okay and then we saw the need for performance testing why it is important uh, to test your application for its for its performance what are its impacts okay so basically uh, performance testing plays an important role uh, in any software testing uh, life cycle okay so since it uh, whatever uh, uh, good your application is okay so unless it uh, works fine for a particular uh, for under a load okay so nobody is going to use it okay so for single user it might work fine but uh, in case of uh, when more users try to access it it should work seamlessly so then only it will gain the popularity and then only it can generate the revenue and maintain the reputation of any company okay so otherwise uh, if uh, the application is not performing well then it will cause then it will cause a huge loss in the uh, brand name uh, organization's uh, reputation and most importantly it will uh, uh, lose the customer satisfaction as well okay and then we saw the performance testing uh, just we noted down the performance testing concepts which is so these are the terms which you will came across in your uh, next sessions very frequently which is virtual user or test plan or what is nfr this is response time okay when we say response time what does that mean to us okay, so this i'll cover in today's uh, session so then comes the stlc part okay so we covered uh, software testing life cycle in which we discuss about uh, okay what is done in requirement gathering stage test planning uh, what is test case development uh, or is environment setup uh, test case execution and uh, then the uh, test cycle closure okay so which is the 
final stage in software testing lifecycle. Okay, so so this is so uh, this was about what we covered yesterday, and today we'll see about the performance testing lifecycle, uh, which are the various performance testing tools used in performance testing, and uh, we'll also see various types of performance tests. And after covering the this part of the first section, we'll move on to the core concepts. Okay, guys. I think uh, all of the folks have been joined. Hello, Pawan. Hello, Sarda. Yeah, hi, Harry. Yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, so by the time, guys, you joined, I have just uh, revised the yesterday's, uh, what we covered yesterday's. Uh, in in yesterday's session okay i think we all are good to start with today's topics okay okay so performance testing life cycle uh, i'll quickly make a note of here or if this is day two So now we'll see performance testing life cycle PTLC. Okay, so uh, what performance testing uh, life cycle means? Uh, uh, whenever we do performance testing, so it has to undergo some uh, some stages. Okay, some so which is followed uh, across. Uh, across various uh, application performance testing okay so these steps are uh, i'll list down first these steps then we'll see in detail uh, how it, uh, about it so the first step would be poc okay so which is also known as proof of concept now the second would be nfr which is non functional requirement scattering third stage is test plan or test planning The next stage is scripting and enhancement. Okay, the next step is scenario design and execution. Scenario design and execution. The next one, the sixth step would be analyzing the test reports and retesting. And finally comes the closure activity. Okay. So uh, these are the seven stages in uh, performance testing life cycle. Okay, so somewhere in uh, uh, so these might vary uh, at the organization level because uh, based on the what uh, approach you followed in performance testing, so you might uh, see that you know some of the stages are clubbed together, or you might see if maybe test planning is done 
burst or parallelly with the uh, non functional requirements so so this might happen so it uh, but uh, the scripting scenario design analysis so this has to go one after the other okay unless you have scripts uh, ready uh, so you cannot execute the test and unless you execute you cannot uh, analyze or uh, report anything to your customers or your, to your client okay so these things of course will come in uh, sequential order but uh, some in some cases you might find that nfr and test planning will go uh, parallelly okay in order to save the timelines so now we'll see about uh, what is uh, proof of concept okay what is poc means okay so poc as it stands for uh, proof of concept so here we'll uh, what we'll do is uh, being a performance tester you will try to understand uh, the application architecture uh, what kind of application is it uh, what technologies are used uh, for the application development okay so very high level stuff you will try to gather from uh, the development uh, team and the business analysts so here you will have to interact with the various stakeholders guys so in which what comes is uh, development leads tech leads your architects uh, then the business analyst the product owners so so you have to get uh, a brief about uh, and understand the brief of uh, your overall, overall application uh, for within the POC. Okay, here you try to understand what is the protocol which is used for the application, and based on that, you will decide the tool which is used uh, for the application, which will be compatible uh, with the application performance testing. Okay, so if you find that okay, JMeter is compatible and we can use JMeter, then as a part of POC you will record a sample uh, business flow of the application and uh, you might execute it with some uh, minimum users and see uh, how it is responding uh, whether you are able to proceed uh, whether you are able to script it or not okay and based on poc uh, you will advise the clients to which so uh, which tool uh, they can go for okay so in this i use the term protocol okay so protocol what does protocol means uh, here is it is the set of rules which is uh, followed for the communication between two or more systems okay so generally for web application generally for web application we have uh, http https protocol so you will find most of the, your uh, web applications uh, will be following the same protocol okay so there are some other protocols as well such as tcp ip smtp ftp okay but, but predominantly you will find your application in case of web applications they will be based on or uh, they will be following the http ht or https protocol okay so once you identify the protocol yes then comes the tool identification the compatibility identification in the poc okay so here we'll see uh, what are the factors uh, that are considered for uh, tool selection because see this is the first step okay and when uh, most of the times uh, if you are a performance engineer with uh, uh, experience of more than five plus years or four plus years so now nowadays it is expected that okay you guys uh, refer or recommend the tool which will be the best suit for that particular application so so before selecting any tool okay so you need to ask certain questions to yourself or raise certain questions so what are these questions so this would be in poc selection of tool so what it uh, basically depends on the technologies which it, it will be based on the technologies which are which you are going to use uh, uh, i mean you are going to test in your application 
okay what is the protocol followed by the application okay and by application i mean here aut which stands for application under test okay so and then comes what is the overall budget uh, located for the performance project and that to how much budget is allocated for the tool itself so so say we have in performance for performance testing we have various kind of tools okay some of them are open source tools and uh, some of them are uh, licensed tools okay so which for execution you need to purchase the license okay and uh, most of the times this licensing cost will vary depending on the protocol as well okay uh, because the same license will not work for all the protocols so based on the protocol you might have to purchase the different licenses okay so so that is the key important factor in the tool selection so the, what is what's the budget uh, which is allocated for uh, your tools then comes the uh, estimation of uh, complexity that can be handled with uh, with the tool which you which you find compatible with your application okay and you will also have to see that how frequently um, how frequently the performance tests are going to happen in your project so it should not happen that okay you are purchasing any licensed tool but uh, the performance tests that needs to be done in your application is once in a month or once in a quarter okay you just uh, your releases are happening uh, maybe uh, quarterly releases and you are uh, getting a you, you are paying a huge cost for just for a license okay so that should not be done so in that case you need to rethink on the tool selection uh, then of course comes the tool efficiency okay how easy how easy it is to uh, to script in that using that particular tool or if you can have any alternative tool for uh, if you can select any alternative tool which uh, gives you better results okay which gives you better execution uh, flexibility and result interpretation so so those are the factors uh, which uh, which are involved in tool selection and uh, some of the other factors such as vendor support uh, additional protocol support integration with the ci cd pipeline and other platforms okay so so these are also the important uh, uh, points which you need to consider in the selection of tool okay so that is what you do in the poc part okay so this is uh, totally based if you are uh, working for a new client okay so for the first time so then in that part poc plays an important role Okay. After POC, then comes the NFR or uh, non-functional requirement gathering. So this is again a, a important stage in any performance testing uh, for any performance tester. Okay, because uh, most likely they this is the second stage which they in the in the performance testing life cycle which they came across. So uh, in uh, non-functional requirement gathering, you will uh, ask for various kinds of data from uh, from uh, your various stakeholders. Uh, okay, so business analysts, uh, your development uh, team leads, uh, architectures. So, to, so they will help you to get. Uh, this uh, non-functional requirements as well as some support teams or, or networking teams are all uh, also involved uh, in this non-functional requirements so what are the uh, uh, any start to start any project so what you will ask them uh, if if you are not uh, if you haven't performed the poc okay maybe it's uh, uh, you are working for the and this is a new project to you so you uh, get the time to perform the okay so and all has been already done then and starting with the non-functional uh, nfr stage then what are the questions that you will need uh, to ask to the question or what data that you gather in the 
non functional requirement gathering so that would be first one would be the application url in case of web applications you will ask for the application url okay so after that uh, you will identify the you will navigate through the application and identify the key scenarios okay you will identify the key scenarios to be considered for performance testing okay so here uh, in functional testing guys uh, in functional testing you will see that okay uh, all the functionalities of an applications are tested okay so if you have for any enterprise application you have more than thousands of functionalities of various modules uh, okay but in fun in performance testing uh, you will consider only those scenarios which are most frequently used in uh, in your application okay With the uh so generally uh, the rule is the 20% of your scenarios that puts 80% of the overall application load are considered in performance testing okay so this is uh, really important to understand what needs to be considered in performance testing okay so let's say you are working on a uh, banking application okay so what are the keys so in banking application you will find uh, so many modules and so many functionalities so you will not uh, include all of those functionalities in performance testing for performance testing so what you need to ask uh, to your client is okay must give me those 20% of scenarios which are uh, which contributes the maximum traffic or 80% of traffic on your application so so for example in core banking uh, those scenarios could be logging into the application okay uh, then generating account statement uh, balance checking uh, fund transfer adding a beneficiary so these are the key scenarios which uh, can be include which can be considered as uh, the performance testing scenarios okay and apart from this sometimes uh, uh, you may came across a situation where okay so some scenarios they might not be used that frequently but uh, when whenever they are executed uh, okay maybe in case of some reports okay so there are some reports which uh, uh, generated in an application in case of banking application uh, so those report generation might take a longer time for the execution so although it is not part of it is not used frequently but still you have to uh, uh, include them it in your performance testing as whenever it that particular scenario is executed okay so if you find that it is affecting your overall application performance then uh, that scenario needs to be considered in performance testing okay so, so that was a slight variation uh, in during the scenario selections okay so once you are familiar with the key scenarios or you get the key scenarios you will prepare the uh, navigational flow i mean uh, in most of the companies it is followed that you prepare a navigational flow of uh, those uh, scenarios so these are also called as uh, critical business transactions okay so these scenarios which you identify for performance testing are also known as critical business transactions or cbt is an abbreviation for the same after uh, non function uh, in uh, non functional requirement gathering is 
after uh, you have the key scenarios with you now you need to understand the application architecture as well okay what is the uh, overall architecture of your application the physical architecture and the low level architecture so that you will try to in the non fun in the nfr size in the non functional requirement gathering stage okay so by understanding the architecture i mean uh, how the application flow is okay once you send uh, once the user sends the request what path is followed by that particular request to the server okay so so that is uh, comes under the application architecture understanding so here you will get to know what kind of various servers are present in your application okay uh, mainly web servers application servers or database servers okay and what are the its types okay and if there are any backend systems involved for a specific functionality or what or any downstream dependency it has so so that you will came to know in the architecture understanding okay then comes the understanding of the data dependency if you if your application requires uh, any particular data for example if it is a if you have some login functionality where a user logs in into the application and then performs various uh, business transactions then uh, you have to uh, ask for uh, that kind of data uh, within your requirement gathering at least some data so that you can proceed with the scripting okay uh, so guys here it is important to understand uh, sometimes data procurement uh, might take a longer time because uh, in case of enterprise applications mainly in case of banking applications to you know to generate a data it takes uh, it takes the time after you state after you stay give your requirement it takes time for the data to generate so but uh, with the some amount of data you can uh, you can proceed with the scripting part uh, at least so you it is recommended that not to wait for uh, entire data set to be provided from uh, the data procurement team okay mainly uh, that the back end uh, you will receive the data from the back end teams or uh, the other qas which are works which uh, are dealing with the functional testing part of uh, the application so so you might have to reach out to them to get the data okay so understanding data dependency is a important factor and uh, then comes the environment setup okay on what kind of environment you going to test your application understanding environment is again an important so whether it is an uat environment or pre prod environment or the production environment so so that is important to understand okay so earlier what used to happen we never used to test the performance tests in the production environment considering uh, the fact that okay in your performance test a lot of data is pushed to the server so that might affect uh, the live servers okay but what happens now is uh, now the trend has slightly changed and now you might see that various tests are uh, performed in the, in the production environment itself so for this uh, uh, specific downtime is taken okay some time slots are taken and during off business hours okay when nobody is using that particular application during those time you will see uh, the performance tests are executed uh, on the application okay so generally uh, here the we ask for uh, the environment which is quite close or similar to the performance testing in uh, for the to the production environment okay so why why we ask for this is so generally if you are testing uh, you are doing the performance testing 
on an environment which is uh, not really close to the production environment which is not even half of the uh, that of the production environment so for example if in production environment you have four application servers two database servers and maybe two web servers but in uh, the test environment if you have only one instance of application server one instance of uh, database server and one instance of web server then whatever you are testing so you cannot extrapolate the results okay the res results would not be that much reliable as compared to the production testing environment so, so that's why we ask for the production like environment in the uh, when we understand the environments and then comes we all the what are the performance sets uh, that needs to be uh, covered during the performance testing okay the load test soak test or the stress test so depending on the application it varies so so you will discuss those things with your uh, team leads and uh, your managers and you will decide okay what kind of testing is required on a particular application the types of tests to be covered so with this we complete the uh, nfr non functional requirement gathering now comes the test planning okay in test planning stage uh, what we look for it is uh, it is nothing but a road map uh, for your uh, act, uh, for your next activities okay so obje its objective of the test uh, the uh, scope of the test okay so based on whatever uh, requirements you uh, get in the nfr stage so based on that test plan is prepared okay so it mainly consists of your objective test objective uh, the procedures okay that the uh, strategy to be followed in uh, in the performance testing what are the various key uh, critical business transactions that you have identified so that you specify in the, your test plan so this is uh, nothing but a uh, uh, you can say a template which is uh, you will find in your organization and this might vary uh, from organization to organization but the uh, contents okay the uh, the key important factors will remain the same okay so what are those uh, objective of test as i said earlier scope of the test uh, the types of testing covered the approach followed in performance testing uh, you here you also specify the application architecture tool architecture okay and what are the various teams involved in performance testing so that you specify over here uh, what are what will be the roles and responsibilities of them uh, the risk and the migrations then also the entry criteria and the exit criteria so this is mentioned in the test planning so what entry criteria means whenever the prerequisites are uh, satisfied so that will be called as an entry criteria and by exit criteria i mean whenever uh the statistics whenever uh, your slas are meet then uh, as by sla it uh, means the service level agreements so whenever the slas are met then that can be considered as your exit criteria okay so those are the factors of test plan which you will find in across various test plans as the test plan varies from organization to organization and it also varies from uh, application to application as well but uh, same i mean same test uh, sometimes same test plan you can uh, use it uh, with the minor changes you can uh, use it for different similar type of applications 
Okay, so what it consists of is the objective of test, scope of the test, then the process followed, or you can call it as an approach. types of test okay then the architecture application architecture tool architecture uh, environment details entry and exit criteria various risks associated with the project the teams involved in the project okay any prerequisite and some assumptions okay for so what kind of assumptions so if you came across any bottleneck in your performance testing and if you raise it with the development team okay so they are expected to resolve the same in uh, particular uh, within the particular time okay so that uh, that you can specify under the assumptions because unless uh, unless uh, the fix unless they fix the same you cannot proceed with the next testing okay so for example if you start your load testing with uh, say 100 users and uh, after your uh, you perform the test hunt for 100 users it went fine and when you go for the next uh, test okay for the 200 user test so at that time if you find that okay we are getting some uh, you have identified some bottlenecks okay which needs to be fixed then that has to be addressed to the development team and uh, uh, they needs to fix it within uh, within a given amount of time okay so that you can specify in the assumptions under the assumptions section so these are the things which uh, generally comes under test planning and yeah one more thing i left out is the deliverables okay so what uh, kind of reporting uh, is that you will follow okay once the whether only uh, uh, report analysis in is in your scope or you will also give the root cause analysis for uh, during your testing so so that is uh, given in the so that is mentioned in the deliverables section okay and uh, once the test plan and you will also specify a detail in test plan you will also specify the uh, details of your uh, the overall journey okay so how much time will be required for scripting how much time is dedicated for the execution the reporting and bug fixing so so that all things will uh, you will you will cover in the test planning stage okay then comes the scripting okay in scripting you will see you will have to start with the, uh, the so what are the key uh, business transactions or the critical business transactions do you identify in requirement gatherings uh, uh, so you'll start scripting on uh, with these scenarios and once uh, the rec uh, mostly if you are using uh, a tool which supports a record and playback feature so you will record your uh, key business transactions then perform so various enhancements uh, on on the script so what are those enhancements means uh, so and why those enhancements are done so basically uh, correlation parameterization so these are the uh, assertions so these are the 
uh, types of enhancements that you perform on your script and why it is done is uh, to make your uh, script robust and uh, ready for the load test execution so that the same script can be used to push the load for multiple users so for that you perform you do the scripting and enhancements so in case of uh, if you try to correlate this with the functional testing then uh, this can be considered as a test case development okay so there you have the test cases so here you will have the scripts okay the terminology will uh, will change a little in performance testing okay then we have the scenario design and execution so here scenario design and execution uh, based on the target load uh, depending on the target load you will design the your uh, scenario okay so in this various factors will come that uh, calculation of concurrent uh, number of users for uh, on in your test okay so and calculation of think time pacing so so, so generally which in short will be called as workload modeling okay so whenever when we come across scenario design at that time we will see about this in more details okay and this will this we can do with the the jmeter okay so after uh, and the scenario has been designed you will execute uh, the load test or uh, the test which you are intended to perform a soap which can be a soap test or a stress test and after that comes the analysis part and the reporting so here uh, once you perform the your test once you perform the execution so so you will get the raw results okay so that you need to uh, that you need to identify and analyze those results uh, you need to derive the statistics the performance metrics from those uh, results and report it to your uh, client and other stakeholders so that uh, they can get a clear idea on uh, the test execution okay so if you find any bugs or any uh, bottlenecks in uh, the testings and those will be reported in the in this section itself in the your your reports will consist of uh, your reports will consist of those bottlenecks uh, the root cause of, for those bottlenecks So generally, uh, uh, you will find that the reports are uh, in the Excel format, or in the Word format, or in the HTML format. Okay. So these are the etc. So these are the various types uh, in which you will find your uh, reports. Okay, which are shared by the performance testing teams. And then comes the first the closure activity in which once you uh, once the slas are made the exit criteria is done then you will uh, the performance testing team is asked to certify or give the go live certificate uh, to the if everything is well uh, and within the sla so they will give the go live certificate uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the client okay so basically that will consist that what kind of test has been done so whatever the results main important results uh, found in the test so that you will specify if there are any uh, specific things that needs to be you know monitor even after uh, when the product uh, application goes live in production so so that things you will mention in your closure reports so this is again generally you will find in a word format okay or in html format depending on your uh, organization okay so with this guys we have completed the performance cycle so since uh, see the uh, we have uh, earlier we have already seen software development life cycle and software testing life cycle as well 
but uh, so th- so those are the things which uh, you might not uh, come across frequently but uh, performance testing life cycle uh, you will uh, you have you might have to work uh, on this in your uh, performance testing careers okay so so that's why i have uh, explained it in detail we have covered uh, its seven parts in detail and now with with jmeter okay with jmeter in what you are able to do is uh, i mean what stages you can uh, perform of this performance testing life cycle are these highlighted stages okay the scripting scenario design analysis report so so these three things you can uh, do with the performance any of the performance testing tools not even jmeter but with the help of any performance testing tools okay so so far uh, any doubts uh, or anything uh, in the topics uh, covered for today yes hi pawan here uh, yeah yes pawan uh, what about the cost and estimation uh, in which part does it fit i mean uh, in this test li- in this test cycle does this fit uh, see costing and estimation you will generally uh, share it in the test planning itself okay once you gather the requirements so at that time the based on at that time you will be able to estimate okay so what costing uh, is okay, i mean so that is basically the management uh, level part so which comes uh, before a test planning so in which you to share the costing and uh, estimation uh, okay uh, uh, then uh, i think then it fits in test plan right and not nfr yeah not in nfr i mean i think it comes in poc right because in poc hmm. uh, we'll be defining like what is a partial estimation and everything see this is the budget uh, i mean the see what see the, there are various factors involved in it whether uh, you are to perform, see, the one thing is the uh, pro, the budget allocated uh, from uh, for the project by the client okay and uh, second is uh, the uh, budget which is or the proposals which are given from your performance testing team okay so by your delivery manager or someone so so on that the discussion happens and in the kick off meetings basically and uh, the decisions are made and then only you can proceed with the uh, other stuff okay so so unless the poc is done unless the requirement gathering is done you won't be able to estimate uh, because based on that only once you identify the key scenarios and all then only you will get uh, an idea okay so how many scenarios are there okay so what uh, what tools you need to select okay how many resources you need to allocate for your uh, for your performance testing okay so so that's why i said that it will uh, poc needs to be done uh, some non functional requirement gathering part needs to be done and in parallel uh, this uh, budget and all will come okay yeah uh, anything else okay so we'll take a short break here uh, guys and after this we will start with the uh, various types of performance tests okay are you my audible yeah uh, who is it um one quick question uh, what is the difference yeah. between uh, assumptions and the risks what exactly you mentioned in both of them okay so assumptions as i said assumptions means okay so in your performance testing if you try to understand the architecture of your application so so when you define your scope okay so you uh, so there are some there might be some scenarios which uh, might be 
uh, dealing with your backend system or any third party system so so those uh, so those needs to be available during your performance testing okay so, so those you specify under the assumptions uh, assumptions section okay because if you try to uh, test some functionality and your third party servers are not available at that time okay then you won't be able to uh, perform the testing or at least you should have uh, the stub created for the same okay so those you will specify in the assumptions section okay and uh, if you talk about the risks okay so in risk factors you will specify uh, that if you are uh, maybe testing on the production environment okay so your test uh, uh, so your load test will pump some data into your uh, application okay it, it, some data will get stored to your database servers okay so in that case uh, uh your database team okay database management team needs to take a regular backups of your database and restore it okay so so that part you specify in the risk section okay during the performance testing that so and so data if you have some uh, update or uh, delete kind of scenario so that kind of data will be pushed to your servers and so so that uh, is uh, mentioned in the risk section so this is just one example there could be uh, other factors as well okay so why i ask is like since you told the first thing right which is third party thing so that sometimes i can see in risk also people tell that okay if third party servers have some issue or something right that that is a risk for our performance system so that's where i get confused always with assumptions okay okay yeah but generally i uh, see it varies on uh, where although you specify that part in the script but in assumptions you you can specify that okay so that needs to be available during your testing and of course you will assume certain things right uh, for example or the other thing could be that during performance testing we assume that uh, no other that testing uh, should be done on the application because generally what happens if the other uh, if there are any other teams performing the application and then that might affect our uh, then that might affect our performance testing okay so so that will again uh, another factor which will come under uh, the assumptions section it looks like very a thin line between assumptions and risk so people write the same thing whatever write it in risk sometimes keeping few words chain uh yes uh, yes manjay so there is a thin line between assumptions and risk but uh, uh, as i as i uh, explained you can uh, you can find the test plans uh, if, if possible i'll share you the test plan in which uh, the clear distinction if it is made i'll see if i have anything uh, but according to my point of view i have uh, explained this okay uh all right fine then we'll take a five minutes break from here guys and and then we'll cover with the then we'll uh, with the next topics okay thanks
Hello, uh, hi guys. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks for confirmation, Lakshman. Okay. Uh, I think uh, if you all are ready, we can get started. Okay, guys. Can you can you please confirm? Yes, I'm ready. Thank you. Yeah, I think all of you are here. Thanks, Abhi. Okay. All right, so now that we have covered uh, performance testing lifecycle in detail, now we'll go to the types of performance testing. Okay. So the very first thing over here is okay. So this is uh, in your performance testing. Majorly, uh, at ninety percent of time, what you will perform would be the load testing. Okay. So load test in load testing, we verify the behavior of the application. That is the response time, throughput rates, and the resource utilization. That is the memory utilization, CPU utilization of the system under normal and peak load conditions. Okay. So here we, what we do is identify the behavior of system. In terms of response time. Throughput and resource utilization. And uh, these these metrics we identify or uh, in in case under specific workload conditions. Okay. So specific workload conditions. That is uh, important uh, over here, guys, to understand in load testing. So you try to identify the behavior of your system uh, when when you push uh, when you uh, push the load of say uh, some number of with some number of concurrent users on your system, and at that point of time, what how your application behaves so so that is the thing which you particularly look for in case of load testing for example uh, say if you have to test an application with uh, 500 users then uh, you will start then you generally you won't start directly with the 500 users you will follow the step up approach and you can you can start with 50 users and gradually uh, you can increase your load on the application. So gradually, based on uh, your results of your earlier tests, you can go on increasing the other. Uh, you can go on increasing the user load. Okay, if your 50 user load test is successful, then you can move on to the 100, and then you can uh, gradually increase the load once you get the satisfactory results. Okay, so. In load testing, we gradually increase the load, but in some cases, you might see that. Uh, uh, so this is generally the step-up approach, but some in some cases, you might came across a situation where you see there are uh, multiple uh, organizations where uh, in if you have the tool, if your license tool, and it is available for a specific uh, window window time, then 
then a step down approach uh, may be followed where uh, you might uh, execute the test with directly with the target load and if the results are fine uh, then uh, then you can move ahead or uh, if not then you can scale down to uh, the lower user load so load testing is uh, again conducted in an environment which is uh, similar to the production environment so and it is uh, generally performed before uh, software application goes live then comes the soap testing so the objective of soap testing is to run the run the particular workload for a longer period of time okay and what this longer period is uh, i mean so based on the application again it varies so consider if you have some banking application so it will be uh, uh, so it will be tested for uh, the entire business hours okay so it may be at least minimum 8 hours so if your load test is uh, in case of your load test it will uh, run for a 1 hour peak duration but in case of uh, soap test uh it might it uh, it may be performed for 8 hours 12 hours or even 24 hours and uh, there are some uh, so test cases in some cases it uh, might go beyond 24 hours as well okay so the main objective for performing so test is to see if there are any uh, memory leaks uh, present in your system or not See, because when you uh, push the load for prolonged duration of time, then there are cases that uh, which will show up the memory leaks present in your system. So, if there are, uh, so it is performed to identify the memory leaks present in system. apart from that okay so there are some uh, so, so this is one of the example where uh, if you have any such bottleneck so that cannot be identified in your load test so it can be easily traced out in the soap testing and uh, the second or uh, the second objective could be in case of uh, failure to close the connection between the tier salt uh, multi in case of multi tiered system in case of uh, entire architecture system so in that case uh, you will you might come across uh, uh, error over here which is the max connection uh, limit count okay so you in case of soft testing you might find an issue where your maximum can number of connections are getting exhausted that limit is getting exhausted so which you might not come across load test so so that kind of uh, issue could be highlighted in the soap testing okay uh, and apart from that if there are any uh, functional level issues for example uh, uh, so if you are uh, performing a scenario where it generates a transaction id and uh, there is a limit for generating the transaction id say it's a five digit number and once uh, once that limit is reached then uh, what happens next so so that can be seen using the soap testing because in load testing you might not uh, perform that many number of transactions and you may not come across that kind of situation but in, but in soap testing since you run for a prolonged duration of time so you will see that okay uh, this kind of issue can be addressed in soap testing 
then comes the stress testing or uh, which is also called as breakpoint testing where you try to see whether your application uh, is sub is pushed beyond it's acceptable uh, beyond its normal limits when your application is pushed beyond normal limit then what happens to your application server how it behaves so that is particularly uh, tested in the stress test okay so what is the maximum uh, load that your system can handle so that is particularly uh, tested in the stress testing okay so for example if you are uh, in lotus if you are performing uh, your test with a thousand concurrent users then in in case of stress case uh, you will see that your load will increase i'm sorry your load will increase drastically and uh, you will see the test uh, you will test your app the application with uh, more number of users maybe uh, 1500 number of users or 2000 number of users to see uh, how your system will behave in case of some abnormal conditions then you have bandwidth test okay so bandwidth test is generally performed to see how your application functions at various network speeds okay nowadays uh, the applications are accessed through uh, through various devices okay maybe your mobile devices or uh, your computer systems laptops so in that case you will see that uh, the network speed will vary depending on the device or depending on your internet connection okay so in bandwidth testing we test the behavior of the application at varying line speeds so what happen in uh, bandwidth testing is uh, what you do uh, you will change uh, the network speed or you will throttle the network so it is also known as throttling so you will change the uh, network speed during your execution and uh, we'll see uh, what uh, how it is impacting on the response time so that can be addressed using a bandwidth test then uh, you will come across uh, sometimes you might have to execute a sync test so which is known as the synchronous testing so there would be a situation where uh, you know your uh, concurrent users which are present in your uh, accessing your application so they try to access the same functionality of the application for example let's consider uh, a movie ticket booking scenario okay so uh, open your users will try to uh, the end users will try to book the movie tickets and it might happen that at the same uh, only one ticket is left and at the at the same point uh, more than five or six users try to uh, book the same ticket so in that case what uh what happens so so that is tested in the sync test okay so this is the one example okay so another example could be uh, the login uh, to any application okay if you uh, you might see that okay when uh, at the same time when uh, more number of users are trying to login into the your application so how your application behaves so so that is particularly tested in the synchronous testing
okay the example for synchronous testing could be movie ticket booking scenario or you also see the flash sales uh, on the e-commerce uh, websites okay so you, uh, many times you must have seen that mobile phones for mobile phones uh, selling they specify a particular time okay so at that particular time uh, when huge number of uh, users try to book uh, that particular mobile phone then how the application behaves whether it uh, responds to everyone or uh, if there is any situation where the same uh, mobile device okay is allocated for uh, all the users so only tested in the sync testing and apart from this you uh, you might see sometimes smoke test or which is also uh, in some cases also referred as baseline test okay so the smoke testing will be performed uh, before your load testing uh, in order to uh, with the so it is performed with a uh, very few number of users in order to see your application functionalities are uh, so whatever critical business transactions you are considering in load test so those are run with minimal users maybe two or two users or three users with uh, few iterations uh, to see whether they are uh, working fine or not okay and if there is any uh, uh, any thing suspicious which you find in the smoke test then uh, maybe some of the application uh, functionality is not working okay uh, so that can be addressed in the smoke testing and uh, before saving your uh, going for the load testing it can save the efforts for load testing because anyways if the smoke test has not run successfully then it will create unreliable uh, results it will show unreliable results in uh, load testing so in avoid to in order to avoid those efforts uh, we perform sometimes you might see the smoke testing is also performed So this is basically then with few number of users. So with this, we have seen various types of performance tests. So and uh, with JMeter, you can perform uh, all these types of tests. Okay, so JMeter will uh, let you perform load test, soak test with uh, various thread groups. You can also perform the stress test, uh, bandwidth test, thing test, and smoke test as well. Now that we have covered uh, the first topic, so now we'll go to the core concepts. So which will be the client server architecture. Sure. I have one quick question here on the yeah. sync, right? I didn't understand exactly that. Can you please repeat on this? Yes, sure. So sync test is nothing but the synchronized test. Okay, so uh, I said uh, there could be some functionalities uh, where uh, you are uh, more than uh, one user okay where your uh, more number of users will try to access the same functionality so consider a movie ticket booking scenario where you have only one uh, left in your application and say there are five numbers of users which try to book the ticket at the same time from their uh, mobile device in that case uh, how the application how the server will respond to all those five users whether it is allocating the same ticket to everybody which it should not do or uh, how it is uh, responding to the first user how it is serving those users so that is particularly tested in the sync test 
okay so here uh, you will simulate a scenario in such a case that okay so user will log in into the application will uh, go to the movie it will uh, they will uh, look for the seat and uh, if, if all not, uh, uh, yeah. it is kind of a red diverse point which we see in load river correct it is the kind of red diverse points yeah i was coming on to this. Okay. okay thank you okay, so your users will come and halt at uh, till that particular point and uh, when all of users uh, all of the users come to that point they will uh, hit the that particular functionality at the same time okay. if you want to tell in a single line in jmeter how this can be accomplished in jmeter you have a, a element which you uh, in it is a synchronous timer which lets you perform this kind of testing okay okay good thank you okay yeah like hadisha like uh, can you explain me like what is throughput yeah so oh, thanks uh, thanks for reminding so we'll cover some of the uh, terminologies which we discussed so far which uh, one of it is the throughput okay so throughput is number of transactions performed per unit time okay so in your uh, yeah, so this is something which is related to the transactions per hour or we also named as transactions per second okay so as i uh, defined the throughput as it is number of transactions per unit time so in may uh, with many tools uh, it gives a graphical representation of throughput during your test execution okay what is the throughput of your application so uh, by throughput it means that how many transactions are performed at that uh, at that point of time so that is nothing but throughput of your application so it could be uh, transactions per hour it could be transactions per seconds okay and the relationship between uh, transactions per hour and transactions per second is if we are performing say 3600 transactions per hour then in other terms you can also specify it as uh, one transaction per second okay since one hour consists of 3600 uh, seconds so when you uh, say uh, my application is performing say 3600 transactions per hour it means that it is performing one transaction per second so in requirement gathering guys uh, this is again an important uh, factor which you uh, ask for the client in uh, in requirement gathering itself so along with the concurrent number of users you also ask for the tph that needs to be achieved or throughput target that needs to be achieved with that amount of concurrent users Uh, within your load testing so what is memory leak uh, okay so memory leak is uh, a situation where uh, you will see that uh, with increase in time uh, you will see that the memory graph is not coming down okay so let me represent it graphically so here if you see so this is uh, on the uh, x axis you have the time and on the y axis you have uh, the uh, i'm sorry on the uh, y axis you have the time and on x axis you have your memory uh, memory ratings okay uh, your memory which is in the form of uh, uh, megabytes okay so you will see that your graph is uh, with respect to time your memory graph will keep go on increasing and it won't come down so there are uh, some situations uh, in which uh, the unreferenced objects are not cleared out uh, from the memory and which leads to memory leak which leads to a situation where your application will go out of memory situation 
so so that is nothing but memory leak and in case of load testing it is uh, it might not address uh, in load testing because generally load testing is done for uh, one hour and uh, sometimes for half an hour so it might not be addressed in the load testing but in case of soak testing when you run the same scenario for prolonged duration of time for 8 hours or 12 hours then in that case uh, you may come across this kind of uh, bottlenecks if they are present in your system if uh, the code is uh, not uh, handled that efficiently okay to uh, if it is not handling your uh, it is not clearing your unreferenced objects if uh, there may be a case where you know programmer has forgot to uh, make the object eligible for garbage collection then in that case you will see the memory leaks present in your system this also comes whenever the cpu percentage is 100% well uh, so they have some collateral effects okay so you cannot say always say that okay my cpu is 100 percent that uh, implies that there is a memory leak in my system so for that so you also need to consider some other factors such as you need to identify the gc trend during your load testing how this like uh, load test should be measured mm -hmm. yeah how the load test is measured like uh, uh, not only on time but you know uh, how can we identify like okay this uh, like the, the website took how much time and how like how how we, how we can measure okay. I mean, it is based on time or response yeah so, so there are three factors on, on the basis of which we can say that okay my uh, load test is successful or not okay so the first one is the response time when i say response time so i mean when you click on the login so, so, so there is a situation if you go to uh, any application and click on login you will see number of requests are fired to your server so not a single request but number of requests are fired to the server and so what is the response time uh, for I'll, I'll talk about the response time uh, in uh, in this topic okay so let me show you one diagram which will talk which will give you the clear idea of response time so consider this to be your architecture of your application and here by client uh, here the client stands for your browser okay so uh, as you know in entire architecture system so there are multiple servers involved in the application server architecture so it could be web server application server and database server so whenever your request is fired from the browser it will go to it will take some time to go to web server then web server will process it and go will send it to application server and uh, now application server will uh, request the database server for the data and once it receives the data it it will uh, process that particular data and will send back to the web server and web server will send back to your client which is your browser okay which could be your uh, chrome browser or any internet explorer browser or in uh, performance testing it will be uh, it will be the performance testing tool in case this uh, the client could be jmeter okay so by response time means the amount of time uh, uh, spent in sending the request uh, processing the request at the server end and receiving the request okay so the your overall response time would be uh, addition of t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4 plus t5 plus t6 okay so this is nothing but uh, response time okay so if my response so majorly is the the service level agreement or the sla what we call okay so for web applications nowadays five seconds is the standard sla so if you are clicking on any button and if it is responding within five seconds then we can say okay this is a 
uh, this is uh, satisfactory okay but it again it varies uh, uh, from uh, application to application there could be certain uh, cases where it might uh, take a longer time since it is communicating with multiple uh, downstream uh, servers so it might take a longer time to respond then uh, and that is the different case but uh, five seconds is the standard sla for load for web applications so if you are uh, if you are getting the response within five seconds then uh, then uh, it can be considered as a successful case okay so in your load test we'll try to identify uh, various pages okay so we have say the user is uh, going to the uh, home page or landing page then logging in then uh, uh, searching for a particular product and then logging out then uh, we'll see for every uh, single click okay what is the response time uh, under under load test whether it is below five seconds uh, if it is below five seconds okay we are good to go if it is not then we'll try to find out uh, what is uh, causing the high response time we will try to find out the root cause of the bottleneck which is causing the high response time and then we'll try to find out the uh, response time when you go for the response time distribution so this is the one factor which is considered in uh, by in measuring your load test so second one is the as i said the throughput okay the amount of transactions per unit time so with 100 users if you, you will configure your test to push say 1000 transactions per hour but uh, due to some reasons if you don't see uh, it is matching the throughput then you will call you will mark that particular load test as a failed load test since it is not achieving the target throughput then you will see uh, then you will try to find out uh, due to what uh, what are the reasons for which you are not achieving the target throughput okay and then comes the resource utilization okay so resource means uh, at server side what is your uh, overall cpu utilization and memory utilization so that is particularly seen comes under resource utilization so based on three uh, these three factors you will uh, you will measure your load test okay so these are the three factors which you will analyze after the execution or during execution and based on this you will uh, call a particular load test as a uh, successful load test or you will treat it as a failed load test okay all right guys so with this uh, i think we have covered uh, the doubts uh, from this section from the introduction section and now we'll see the core concepts uh, so we have another uh, 10 to 12 minutes left so we'll try to cover the uh, some part of core concepts uh, how did you not cover uh, spike testing and endurance testing uh okay see endurance testing is nothing but uh, the soap testing okay so soap testing is also referred as endurance testing um, and yes uh, yeah yes yes uh, the spike testing of course thanks for reminding uh you, sometimes you will came across uh, a situation uh, where you will you need to test uh, you will have to perform the spike testing okay so what happens in spike testing is uh, the load is uh, there you will see there is a, a sudden change at the load level okay so you might see in case of load testing generally the graph would be like this okay so your users will ramp up they will they will stay they will steady for some amount of time and uh, okay here it's
and they will ramp down so this is your normal uh, load testing scenario but what happens in uh, spike test is in spike test you will see uh, your load will your number of you will push the load uh, at a sudden instant okay so you need to observe the behavior of your application when uh, when certain number of users uh, directly increases in your application or directly decreases in your application so there are some spikes uh, in the load and how your application behaves so that is particularly tested in the spike testing okay so if your user comes down then again they are some users are steady and again you increase the load okay which stays for some time again you decrease it a little then those users will stay for uh, say 10 minutes and again you increase the load uh, uh, suddenly okay and then uh, what is the behavior of your application so that is uh, particularly tested in spike testing so here we test increase and decrease of load yeah application behavior at sudden change in user load okay so now we'll move on to the client server architecture so these topics will fall under core concepts okay so generally in a typical web application you will find uh, web servers application servers and a database server depending on the complexity of the system the you might find uh, some other uh, backend systems or third party servers which are communicating with uh, or which on which your application is dependent but in general you'll find in any web application uh, these three types of servers which is web server app server and database server okay and a typical uh, client server architecture uh, looks something like this okay so of course there would be a firewall and other uh, internet uh, related things coming into the your picture but uh, generally you will find your users are accessing your application from a browser or in this case uh, we have we will have the virtual users okay what will what is the meaning of virtual users so those would be the uh, automated script uh, that that will perform the your real world user behavior so those will be the virtual users in performance testing okay so real users or virtual users with the help of any client okay so those will be accessing your uh, applications by the medium of, over the http or https protocol so you might see the firewall uh, into your uh, firewall and some elements like load balancer in your uh, application architecture uh, but what we generally uh, focus on and monitor during the test is web server application server and the database server so these are the three key elements in your uh, any application server architecture okay so based on uh, these based on, the, based on the presence of these components you will the find that there are 
टू टीयर आर्किटेक्चर एंड देर इज अ थ्री टीयर आर्किटेक्चर so the architecture which includes uh, only application server layer and uh, database layer uh, is uh, considered as uh, a two tier architecture uh, but whenever we you have a web server layer uh, the business server layer or the application server layer and a database layer so that will fall under the category of uh, three tier architecture system so the diagram which i shown over here so this is the example of three tier architecture Uh, application so generally uh, the uh, web applications uh, have three tier application architecture okay where you will see some web server application server and database server present in your architecture system and apart from this also you might uh, whenever you uh, in the work on the enterprise level application so you might see there is an integration with other uh, components such as esb okay so which integrates uh, multiple application servers uh, you might see the load balancers okay or proxy servers or uh, sometimes you will see the other other back end services or uh, messaging queues or middleware uh, applications with as a part of your uh, architecture so so, so th those architecture things you need to understand uh, in a detail uh, in your requirement gathering stage from your uh, architect leads or from your development leads now we'll see the uh, now as we have seen the client server architecture so now we'll see the importance of uh, the web server so why web server is uh, present in in your application architecture so uh, for serving the static elements so there are two types of elements uh, you will see in your uh, application uh, okay so some are static resources and some are Uh, dynamic resources okay so what are html pages or jsps servlets that you see so those are images okay so those are some static elements okay so if you go to this website okay let's consider an example of our demo application okay so here if you see uh, there are i'll open the developer tools from where it will uh, be clear so if you see there are multiple elements which or multiple resources which are called when i uh, refresh this page or when i navigate to this page okay there are certain gif there are certain images some css uh, javascript files okay so based on the application it will it will vary so so these are nothing but the static elements and these are generally uh, served from your web server okay so it is used for static elements okay so uh, this could be your servlets html html pages servlets dot png files dot uh, js file javascript files so these are nothing but the examples of static elements which are uh, 
when you when you hit a particular so application so this will be uh, retrieved from your web server layer then comes the application server layer or also known as app server here so in order to run your enterprise application it is the essential element okay so unless you have application server you cannot run uh, your enterprise level application okay for uh, the normal websites okay so there is a difference between websites and a web application okay so normal websites can run only through web server okay there are uh, some html pages which you can host on the web server and uh, uh, only web server can uh, fulfill your needs okay so but in case of enterprise applications uh, application server is important so all business logic runs on the application server so it it is uh, it sits between your web server and the database server and it will uh, establish a secure connection to your database server it will process it will get the data from uh, your database server and it will process it and then it will uh, transfer that data to your web server and so whatever the business logic is so that will be happening on at your application server layer okay so when i say the dynamic element so i mean or jms so these are the examples of dynamic elements which are retrieved from the application server so for example when you log into facebook or any of the social media site okay then you will see that for everybody uh, the layout will remain the same but based on the user uh, the details will change okay the uh, the friends list the posts so those will change based on the uh, user which is logged in into the facebook application okay so that particular data is processed and application server layer okay so application server layer is responsible for uh, delivering your dynamic content and finally comes the database server so as everybody knows so it is used for storing the data storing the clear okay okay so with this uh, now there are we in this uh, technologies in web server app server so you might have uh, come across some uh, three servers or uh, some are uh, license servers okay so based on the usage it varies and based on that uh, the monitoring techniques also varies but uh, some of the parameters uh, which we considered uh, during the monitoring of these application servers will be the overall uh, cpu utilization or memory utilization or in case of application server the jdbc connection count uh, active number of threads so these are the some of the parameters which we monitor or these are the metrics which we monitor during the load test so that's why it is important to understand uh, the architecture of your application and to understand uh, the use of various servers so i think uh, now we have reached uh, today's time limit guys so we'll stop here for today